Welcome back. Well, so this morning, we've got the story of three Ohio men who spent decades in prison for a murder they didn't commit. They never gave up the fight to clear their names. And now they are sharing their lessons learned in hopes of shedding light on the damage of wrongful convictions. In November 2014, Ricky Jackson, Wiley Bridgman, and Kwame Ajamu made headlines when they were exonerated for the 1975 murder of a salesman at a Cleveland, Ohio convenience store. There was such a tremendous feeling of relief and victory because we were right. Uh, we were right and they were wrong and we survived. The prosecution's case rested almost solely on the testimony of one witness. There in the crowd was a young kid by the name of Edward Burning. He was 12 years old. Well, for whatever reason, when the cops said, does anybody see anything or know anything, Edward Burning said, I do. He told the police that he was getting off the school bus at the exact time that this crime was happening, and he witnessed the three of us perpetrate this crime. 20-year-old Wiley, 18-year-old Ricky, and 17-year-old Kwame were arrested, convicted, and sentenced to death while maintaining their innocence. At this point, none of us knew what, why this was happening. We had no inclination. I was afraid every day of my life, and especially death row. In 1978, their death sentences were commuted to life behind bars after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled Ohio's death penalty unconstitutional. Kwame was paroled after 28 years. He vowed to continue fighting for Wiley and Ricky on the outside. Those are my brothers, and, uh, I did all I could. We never gave up the fight. It was always about get to the truth. In 2011, Kwame told his story to Cleveland scene reporter Kyle Swinson. It would take another three years for Vernon to admit he lied. By then, the trio had served a collective 106 years in prison. Since their release, they are working on putting their lives back together. I just make it my purpose in life to enjoy every moment. With us now, Kwame, Ricky, along with Washington Post reporter Kyle Swenson. He is author of the new book, Good Kids, Bad City, which tells the full story of what happened in this case. Ricky, you served 39 years. Yes, sir. 39 years. Nearly 40 years in prison. And you get out. How did that feel, that day that you got out of prison? Uh, it was surreal. Um, it was almost like having an out-of-body experience, you know. Um, prison is about sameness, you know, same color, same sounds, same routine every day. And all of a sudden, uh, all that changes, and you're thrust out into the world, um, and everything's different. It's just so overwhelming, you know, but in a good way. A good way. A great way. I mean, I remember this case because I was in Cleveland at the time. Uh, and I, I always wonder, wh why did Edward Vernon do this? Did we ever find out why this happened? So, yeah, it would take um, 40 years, obviously. Um, but he said that uh, initially he had heard another kid say it to him. And he just uh, piggybacked. Uh, what happened was after that initial, I know who did it, uh, you know, the cops wasn't, wasn't playing around. So they snatched him up, took him into, uh, at that time, would have been 5th District Police uh, Precinct, and uh, began to interrogate him. Um, it went from there to know that wasn't really what happened, and then the coercion, uh, which was that uh, his mom was in the hospital suffering from uh, an ovarian cancer, which she eventually died from. Uh, and uh, they told him that since he wouldn't uh, corroborate his story against Ricky and uh, my brother, which I wasn't involved at that particular time, um, that they would arrest his parents. And so he, he scared him. They, they, they scared pretty, him. they, um, they did. They coerced him. Um, they That's pretty much so, so sequestered him from his family. You know, they kept him downtown, away from everybody. And if anybody tried to contact them, they were threatened with arrest mm -hmm. and prosecution. Kyle, I, I think a lot of folks who are watching this um, ha have to wonder how how something like this, how it could happen initially, and, and how it could take so long for the wrong to be undone. Well, how it happened, really, you know, at that time, Cleveland was so um, divided along lines of race, really, particularly the police department and the African-American community, there was very, a lot of tension there. And that really led to this prosecution of these innocent young men. 
Well, Ricky and Kwame, you've got a lawsuit against the city of Cleveland and the estates of the now deceased officers. Mm -hmm. However, a judge ruled you weren't, weren't able to prove the detectives were inadequately trained, among other issues. You're appealing right. this. So how does it feel to know that, that you know, the, you know the, or who you feel and you believe these folks are most responsible and they're never going to be held uh, accountable? You want to go first? I'll, I'll... It's, um, it's heart, heartbreaking to a sense, but um, we're going to keep pursuing it. Um, what angers me most is that um, they put a dollar value on our lives. You know, the experiences and the things and the families that we've lost, um, the years in prison, incarceration. Um, but again, we're going to keep fighting. Um, it's not over until it's over, you know? We should note that we reached out to the Cleveland Police Department. Uh, they had no response uh, due, to the, due, the, due to the pending lawsuit. Right, exactly. Um, how... how would someone begin to try to make this right? Like, is there, is that even possible? No, it's not. No, it's um, not. And it's I'll not. just say that uh, personally, um, and I'll give you the very end of the <laughs> sentence. I did 28 years actually, uh, physically incarcerated. And I, I uh, came out in January 27, 2003. November of 2002, my brother passed away. Mm. So I did 28 years. You, you see, so there is nothing that can compensate yeah. mm -hmm. this loss based on that reality that happened in 1975. Kyle, is there any possibility they're going to ever find out who did this? Really, at this point, it, it's probably not going to happen. And that creates, you know, there's another victim here, which is the victim's exactly. family. Exactly. So they never get justice in this situation exactly. at all. And until this day, no one ever went to that man's family and mm -hmm. said, we're sorry, mm -hmm. we're still looking, and just right. completely forgot about these people. And, and this you, was a you case talk about it, you're still getting emotional. Yeah, I, I am, because it's, uh, a lot of people were damaged, uh, not just ourselves, you know, but the victim's family, our community, you know, um, and it's never been resolved, and no one seems to be willing to try to resolve it, you know, and so that's our mission. You, know? you, you, don't, you don't seem angry, you don't, you don't seem bitter. Or is it, is it a facade? Are we angry? Are we bitter? So I, I, I want to put, put that in this proper perspective for you. Um, I'm angry as all outdoors, but, and I'm bitter as uh, twice that, but it's against the system. It's not against a person individually. Uh, Edward Vernon, I forgave Edward Vernon in 1975. He was 12, I was 17, we were children. Uh, I wasn't mad at him no longer than a week. But, what is perpetuated by a system that should be by people we trust, um, the, the judges, the prosecutors, the police officers. You know, these people have, have in, in fact, caused a great, a great uh, defect in my life. And so I'm angry at them, and I'm going to fight them as long as I have breath. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the story. Thank you for having us. We should note also that NBC News did reach out to Edward Vernon as well for a response to this segment. We did not hear back from him. Again, Kyle's book is called Good Kids, Bad City. Thanks again for joining us. Thank, Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. We'll be right back. Thank you.